thing that motivated me and still motivates me to this day is that kids, anybody reading poetry, they, you don't ask them what does the poem mean because kids in particular, they don't care what it means. They do not care. But if you allow them to have an experience with the poetry, they make meaning from that experience. And that's why I want to experience the poetry from the inside out rather than the outside in. And, so that's, uh, and how you might be able to do a praise poem for them, too. It goes like this. To the man who in my childhood eyes had surely sprung from the ground he had harvested. Surely God had one day in a fit of whimsy reached down to the fertile Nebraska flatlands, pushing corn seed after corn seed into the black dirt. He must have showered rain and sun upon that special crop, and after harvest, rolled it between grindstone hands into a cornmeal unsurpassed, which he passed with care to Eldora Tracy Wolf for nine months baking. After which, little Leo grows into the world one quarter human, three quarters corn crop. <laughs> to the man who saw me point and play the barrel of a 22 at my brother, and knowing how life dances upon a fickle fingertip, swung his leather sole against my soft city backside. <laughs> who could have guessed a man so slight would wield this mammoth foot? The foot of Paul Bunyan sends a grandson up and up, wide-eyed child in breathless flight, hits the ground a grain wiser. <laughs> to the man who, out of his rural element, was able still to press his stamp upon our chic Virginia town, how he parallel parked his politically incorrect vote of a Buick in front of a busy downtown sidewalk, bumper crashing into bumper crashing into bumper, using Braille or Zen or optimism, bumper crashing, bumper crashing, bumper, until he had made himself the home. <laughs> to the man who could demonstrate the proper way to slice the knife blade just below the silk, to peel back green husk, to reveal raw corn smelling of musk, succulent as a peach, and how to cut the hands just so, to form a fountain spout of water from the irrigation pipes that he had labored to lay in relentless sun, <clears throat> to the man whose overalls hung on the hook in a garage as if they were a breathing thing that I would watch, as one might watch in awe the cape of Superman left alone on the line. Prevailing husker winds, corn stalks been growing at a predestined lean. Growing as life will, willing room for future corn, and so too grandpa's go. For you, Leo, who long ago sowed seeds that yield in me continually. To Leo. Y'all say, to Leo. To, to Leo. Leo. I am the ice. I have no need of sleep. Why do the humans crave it as they do? While they and I have a secret tryst to keep, I will not rest, there is no time to lose. On shore, a young boy dreams himself a man. Another youngster dreams of future home. A toddler dreams of chocolate eggs to eat. A restless girl dreams soldiers in pursuit. A gambler dreams a trick of all one soup. These are all characters that we've been introduced to. On board, the lookouts rest their weary eyes, for sleep is precious rare when out to sea. The uniformed fifth officer awake, awaits the bells that end the midnight watch. At White Star Dock, Southampton's crowning jewel, Titanic finally settles down to sleep. The pantry stocked, the coal bins full of fuel, the crew recruitment list at last complete. Come sunrise, they'll arrive from near and far. Come sunrise, they'll arrive from every port, by railway, horse-drawn cab, or motor car. Come sunrise, they will rush to climb aboard. For now, her engine's dumb, Titanic waits. She waits, dim-witted, slow, colossal brute, to carry on her back her human freight. I am the ice. I am of water made. That's why it's now of water that I speak. Watch how the water licks Titanic's hull. Hear how the water makes her rivets creak. See how before her trip even begins, the water is obsessed with getting in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.